The Sunna, Sevuna or Yadavas of Devagiri c. was an Indian dynasty, which at its peak ruled a kingdom stretching from the Tungabhadra to the Narmada rivers, including present-day Maharashtra, North Karnataka and parts of Madhya Pradesh, from its capital at Devagiri present-day Dalatabad in modern Maharashtra. The Yadavas initially ruled as feudatories of the western Chalukyas. Around the middle of the 12th century, as the Chalukya power waned, the Yadava king Biyama V declared independence. The Yadava kingdom reached its peak under Simhana II, and flourished until the early 14th century, when it was annexed by the Delhi Sultanate. Etymology <inaudible> 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 The Sunna dynasty claimed descent from the Yadavas and therefore, its kings are often referred to as the Yadavas of Devagiri. The correct name of the dynasty, however, is Sunna or Sevuna. The inscriptions of this dynasty, as well as those of contemporary kingdoms, the Hoysala, Kakatiya dynasty and western Chalukyas call them Sunas. The name is probably derived from the name of their second ruler, Sunashandra. The Sevuna or Sunna name was brought back into use by John Faithful Fleet in his book The Dynasties of the Canaries Districts of the Bombay Presidency from the earliest historical times to the Musulman conquest of AD 1318. <inaudible> <inaudible> Origin The earliest historical ruler of the Sunna – Yadava dynasty can be dated to the mid-9th century, but the origin of the dynasty is uncertain. Little is known about their early history. Their 13th century court poet Hemadri records the names of the family's early rulers, but his information about the pre 12th century rulers is often incomplete and inaccurate. The dynasty claimed descent from Yadu, a hero mentioned in the Puranic legends. According to this account, found in Hemadri's Vratakanda as well as several inscriptions, their ancestors originally resided at Mathura, and then migrated to Dvaraka in present day Gujarat. A Jain mythological legend states that the Jain saint Jainaprabhasori saved the pregnant mother of the dynasty's founder Dridaprahara from a great fire that destroyed Dvaraka. A family feudatory to the Yadavas migrated from Vallabhi also in present-day Gujarat to Khandesh. But otherwise, no historical evidence corroborates their connection to Dvaraka. The dynasty never tried to conquer Dvaraka, or establish any political or cultural connections with that region. Its rulers started claiming to be descendants of Yadu and migrants from Dvaraka after becoming politically prominent. Dvaraka was associated with Yadu's descendants, and the dynasty's claim of connection with that city may simply be a result of their claim of descent from Yadu rather than their actual geographic origin. The Hoysalas, the southern neighbors of the dynasty, similarly claimed descent from Yadu and claimed to be the former lords of Dvaraka. The territory of the early Yadava rulers was located in present-day Maharashtra, and several scholars, especially Maharashtrian historians, have claimed a Maratha origin for the dynasty. However, Marathi, the language of present-day Maharashtra, began to appear as the dominant language in the dynasty's inscriptions only in the 14th century, before which Kannada and Sanskrit were the primary language of their inscriptions. Marathi appears in around 200 Yadava inscriptions, but usually as translation of or addition to Kannada and Sanskrit text. During the last half century of the dynasty's rule, it became the dominant language of epigraphy, which may have been a result of the Yadava attempts to connect with their Marathi speaking subjects, and to distinguish themselves from the Kannada speaking Hoysalas. The earliest instance of the Yadavas using the term Marathe as a self designation appears in a 1311 inscription recording a donation to the Pandharpur temple. Towards the end of the dynasty's rule, epigraphic evidence suggests that the dynasty likely emerged from a Kannada speaking background. Around 500 Yadava inscriptions have been discovered, and Kannada is the most common language of these inscriptions, followed by Sanskrit. Of the inscriptions found in present-day Karnataka the oldest being from the reign of Biyama II, most are in Kannada language and script, others are in the Kannada language but use Devanagari script. Older inscriptions from Karnataka also attest to the existence of Yadava feudatories such as Sunas of Masavadi ruling in the Darwad region in the 9th century, although these feudatories cannot be connected to the main line of the dynasty with certainty. Many of the dynasty's rulers had Kannada names and titles such as Dadiapa, Biyama, Rajugi, Vadugi, and Vasugi, and 
Kaliya Balala. Some kings had names like Simhana or Singana and Malugi, which were also used by the Kalachuris of Kalyani, who ruled in present day Karnataka. Records show that one of the early rulers, Sunishandra II, had a Kannada title, Selavadega. The rulers had very close matrimonial relationships with Kannada speaking royal families throughout their rule. Biyama II was married to Lachchiav, who was from a Rashtrakuta descendant family in Karnataka. Vadiga was married to Vadiyav, daughter of Rashtrakuta chieftain Darapa. Wives of Vasugi and Biyama III were Shalukya princesses. The early Sunna coins also had Kannada legends engraved on them indicating it was a court language. The early Yadavas may have migrated northwards owing to the political situation in the Deccan region, or may have been dispatched by their Rashtrakuta overlords to rule the northern regions. Political history As feudatories The earliest historically attested ruler of the dynasty is Dridaprahara c. 860-880, who is said to have established the city of Chandraditiapura modern Chandar. He probably rose to prominence by protecting the people of Khandesh region from enemy raiders. Amid the instability brought by the Pratihara Rashtrakuta War, Dridaprahara's son and successor was Sunashandra, c. 880-900, after whom the dynasty was called Sunna Vamsha, IAST, Sunna Vamsa, and their territory was called Sunna Desha. He probably became a Rashtrakuta feudatory after helping the Rashtrakutas against their northern neighbors, the Paramaras. He established a new town called Sunapura possibly modern Sinner. Not much information is available about Sunashandra's successors Dadiapa or Dadiapa, Biyama I, and Rajugi or Rahiga, who ruled during c. 900-950. The next ruler Vandugi also Vadiga I or Badiga raised the family's political status by marrying into the imperial Rashtrakuta family. He married Voavaya, a daughter of Darapa, who was a younger brother of the Rashtrakuta emperor Krishna III. Vandugi participated in Krishna's military campaigns, which may have resulted in an increase in his fief, although this cannot be said with certainty. Little is known about the next ruler, Dadiasa c. 970-985. His son Biyama II acknowledged the suzerainty of the Kalyani Shalukya ruler Tailapa II, who overthrew the Rashtrakutas. As a Shalukya feudatory, he played an important role in Tailapa's victory over the Paramara king Munja. Biyama II was succeeded by Vasugi I R. C. 1005 who married Nyaladevi, the daughter of a Shalukya feudatory of Gujarat. The next ruler Biyama III is known from his Kalas Budrik grant inscription. He married Avaladevi, a daughter of the Shalukya king Jayasima II, as attested by a Visai inscription. He may have helped his father-in-law Jayasimha and his brother-in-law Someshvara I in their campaigns against the Paramara king Boja. For unknown reasons, the Yadava power seems to have declined over the next decade, during the reigns of Vasugi II alias Vadiga or Yadugi and Biyama IV. The next ruler was Sunashandra II, who, according to the Yadava records, restored the family's fortunes just like the god Hari had restored the earth's fortunes with his Varaha incarnation. Sunashandra II appears to have ascended the throne around 1050, as he is attested by the 1052 Diolali inscription. He bore the feudatory title Maha Mandaleshvara and became the overlord of several sub-feudatories, including a family of Khandesh. A 1069 inscription indicates that he had a ministry of seven officers, all of whom bore high-sounding titles. During his tenure, the Chalukya kingdom saw a war of succession between the brothers Someshvara II and Vikramaditya VI. Sunashandra II supported Vikramaditya who ultimately succeeded, and rose to the position of Maha Mandaleshvara. His son Aramadeva or Aramadeva, R. C. 1085-1105, who helped him against Someshvara II, succeeded him. Aramadeva's queen was Yogala, but little else is known about his reign. The ASVI inscription credits him with helping place Vikramaditya on the Shalukya throne. Aramadeva was succeeded by his brother Simhana I. R. C. 1105-1120. The Yadava records state that he helped his overlord Vikramaditya VI complete the Karpura Vrata ritual, by getting him a Karpura elephant. 
1124 inscription mentions that he was ruling the Paliyanda 4000 province identified as the area around modern Paranda. The dynasty's history over the next 50 years is obscure. The 1142 Anginari inscription attests the rule of a person named Sunachandra, but Hemadri's records of the dynasty do not mention any Sunachandra III. Historian R. G. Bhandarkar theorized that this Sunachandra may have been a Yadava sub feudatory, the next known ruler Malugi R. C. 1145 was a loyal feudatory to the Chalukya king Tailapa III. His general Dada and Dada's son Mahadara fought with Tailapa's rebellious Kalachari feudatory Bayala II. He extended his territory by capturing Parnaketa modern Patked in Akola district. The Yadava records claim that he seized the elephants of the king of Utkala, but do not provide any details. He also raided the kingdom of the Kakatiya ruler Rudra, but this campaign did not result in any territorial gains for him. Malugi was succeeded by his elder son Amara Gangaya, who was succeeded by his son Amara Malugi alias Malugi II. The next ruler Kaliya Balala, whose relationship to Malugi is unknown, was probably an usurper. He was succeeded by Biyama V around 1175. <laughs> Rise as a sovereign power At the time of Biyama V's ascension in c. 1175, his nominal overlords—the Shalukas—were busy fighting their former feudatories, such as the Hoysalas and the Kalachuris. Biyama raided the northern Gujarat Chalukya and Paramara territories, although these invasions did not result in any territorial annexations. The Natala Shahamana ruler Kelhana, who was a Gujarat Chalukya feudatory, forced him to retreat. Meanwhile, the Hoysala ruler Balala II invaded the Chalukya capital Kalyani, forcing Biyama's overlord Someshvara to flee. Around 1187, Biyama forced Balala to retreat, conquered the former Chalukya capital Kalyani, and declared himself a sovereign ruler. According to Hemadri, he then established the Devagiri city, which became the new Yadava capital. In the late 1180s, Balala launched a campaign against Biyama, and decisively defeated his army at Sorator. The Yadavas were driven to the north of the Malaprabha and Krishna rivers, which formed the Yadava Hoysala border for the next two decades. Imperial expansion Biyama's son Jaitugi successfully invaded the Kakatiya kingdom around 1194, and forced them to accept the Yadava suzerainty. Jaitugi's son Simhana, who succeeded him around either 1200 or 1210, is regarded as the dynasty's greatest ruler. At its height, his kingdom probably extended from the Narmada River in the north to the Tungabhadra River in the south, and from the Arabian Sea in the west to the western part of the present day Andhra in the east. He launched a military campaign against the Hoysalas who were engaged in a war with the Pandyas, and captured a substantial part of their territory. The Radhas of Sandati, who formerly acknowledged the Hoysala suzerainty, became his feudatories, and helped him expand the Yadava power southwards. In 1215, Simhana successfully invaded the northern Paramara kingdom. According to Hemadri, this invasion resulted in the death of the Paramara king Arjunavarman, although this claim is of doubtful veracity. Around 1216, Simhana defeated the Kohalpur Shilahara king Boja II, a former feudatory, who had asserted his sovereignty. The Shilahara kingdom, including its capital Kolhapur, was annexed to the Yadava kingdom as a result of this victory. In 1220, Simhana sent an army to the Lata region in present day Gujarat, whose rulers kept shifting his allegiance between the Yadavas, the Paramaras, and the Chalukyas. Simhana's general Kolshavara killed the defending ruler Simha, and captured Lata. Simhana then appointed Simha's son Shanka as a Yadava vassal in Lata. Sometime later, the Chalukya general Lavanaprasada invaded Lata, and captured the important port city of Kambat. Simhana's feudatory Shanka invaded Chalukya controlled territory twice, with his help, but was forced to retreat. The Chalukya Yadava conflict came to end in c. 1232 with a peace treaty. In the 1240s, Lavanaprasada's grandson Vasaladeva usurped the power in Gujarat, and became the first Vajila monarch. During his reign, Simhana's forces invaded Gujarat unsuccessfully, and the Yadava general Rama a son of Kolshavara, was killed in a battle. Several Yadava feudatories kept shifting their allegiance between the Yadavas and the Hoysalas, and tried to assert their independence whenever presented with an opportunity. 
Simhana's general Bichana subdued several such chiefs, including the Rattas, the Guttas of Darwad, the Kadambas of Hangul, and the Kadambas of Goa. The Kakatiya king Ganapati served him as a feudatory for several years, but assumed independence towards the end of his reign. However, Ganapati did not adopt an aggressive attitude towards the Yadavas, so no major conflict happened between the two dynasties during Simhana's reign. Simhana was succeeded by his grandson Krishna, alias Kanara, who defeated the invaded the Paramara kingdom, which had weakened because of invasions from the Delhi Sultanate. He defeated the Paramara kings sometime before 1250, although this victory did not result in any territorial annexation. Krishna also attempted an invasion of the Vajela ruled Gujarat, but this conflict was inconclusive, with both sides claiming victory. He also fought against the Hoysalas. Again, both sides claim victory in this conflict. Krishna's younger brother and successor Mahadeva curbed a rebellion by the Shilaharas of northern Konkan, whose ruler Someshvara had attempted to assert his sovereignty. He invaded the eastern Kakatiya kingdom, taking advantage of rebellions against the Kakatiya queen Rudrama, but this invasion appears to have been repulsed. He also invaded the southern Hoysala kingdom, but this invasion was repulsed by the Hoysala king Narasimha II. Mahadeva's Kadamba feudatories rebelled against him, but this rebellion was suppressed by his general Balaj Deva around 1268. Mahadeva was succeeded by his son Amana, who was dethroned by Krishna's son Ramachandra after a short reign in 1270. During the first half of his reign, Ramachandra adopted an aggressive policy against his neighbors. In the 1270s, he invaded the northern Paramara kingdom, which had been weakened by internal strife, and easily defeated the Paramara army. The Yadava army was also involved in skirmishes against their northwestern neighbors, the Vigelas, with both sides claiming victory. In 1275, he sent a powerful army led by Tikama to the southern Hoysala kingdom. Tikama gathered a large plunder from this invasion, although ultimately, his army was forced to retreat in 1276. Ramachandra lost some of his territories, including Raichur, to the Kakatiyas. The Purushottamapuri inscription of Ramachandra suggests that he expanded the Yadava kingdom at its northeast frontier. First, he subjugated the rulers of Vajrakara probably modern Vairagar, and Bandagara modern Bandara. Next, he marched to the defunct Kalachari kingdom, and occupied the former Kalachari capital Tripuri modern tour near Jubalpur. He also constructed a temple at Varanasi, which suggests that he may have occupied Varanasi for two to three years, amid the confusion caused by the Delhi Sultanate's invasion of the local Gahadavala kingdom. He crushed a rebellion by the Yadava feudatories at Ked and Sangamishwar in Konkan. Decline In 1278, Ramachandra appears to have defeated the Turkic invaders from the Delhi Sultanate, as a Sanskrit royal inscription of that year glorifies him as a great bore in securing the earth from the oppression of the Turks. However, in 1294, Allah Uddin Khalji of the Delhi Sultanate successfully raided Devagiri. Kalji restored it to Ramachandra in return for his promise of payment of a high ransom and an annual tribute. However, this was not paid and the Sunna kingdom's arrears to Kalji kept mounting. In 1307, Kalji sent an army commanded by Malik Kafir, accompanied by Khwaja Haji, to Devagiri. The Muslim governors of Malwa and Gujarat were ordered to help Malik Kafir. Their huge army conquered the weakened and defeated forces of Devagiri almost without a battle. Ramachandra was taken to Delhi. Kalji reinstated Ramachandra as governor in return for a promise to help him subdue the Hindu kingdoms in South India. In 1310, Malik Kafir mounted an assault on the Kakatiya kingdom from Devagiri. Ramachandra's successor Simhana III challenged the supremacy of Kalji, who sent Malik Kafir to recapture Devagiri in 1313. Simhana III was killed in the ensuing battle and Kalji's army occupied Devagiri. The kingdom was annexed by the Khalji Sultanate in 1317. Many years later, Muhammad Tuluk of the Tuluk dynasty of the Delhi Sultanate subsequently renamed the city Dalatabad. Rulers The rulers of the Sunna – Yadava dynasty include, feudatories Dridaprahara, R. C. 860-880 Sunishandra, R. C. 880-900 Dadiapa I, R. C. 900 
Biyama the first R C 925 Rajugi R C minus 950 Vadiga R C 950 to 970 Dadiasa R C 970 to 985 Biyama the second R C 985-1005 Vasugi the first R C 1005 to 1025 Biyama the third R C 1025 Vasugi the second alias Vadiga or Yadugi R C minus 1050 Sunishandra the second R C 1050 to 1085 Aramadeva or Aramadeva R C 1085-1105 Simhana I also transliterated as Singana the first alias Simaraja, R. C. 1105-1120 Obscure rulers, R. C. 1120-1145 Malugi the first, R. C. 1145-1160 Amaragangaya Amara Malugi alias Malugi the second Kaliya Balala, R. C. Minus 1175. Biyama V, R. C. 1175 1187 Sovereigns. Biyama V, R. C. 1187 1191. Jaitugi I, R. C. 1191 1200 or 1191 1210. Simhana II, R. C. 1200 to 1246 or 1210 to 1246 Krishna alias Kanara R C 1246 to 1261 Mahadeva R C 1261 to 1270 Amana R C 1270 Ramachandra alias Ramadeva R C 1271 to 1308 call G tributaries Ramachandra R C. 1308-1311 Simhana III alias Shankaradeva, R. C. 1311-1313 Harapaladeva, R. C. 1313-1317 Literature Marathi. The Yadavas were the first major dynasty to use Marathi as an official language. Earlier, both Sanskrit and Kannada had been used in present-day Maharashtra. Subsequently, at least partly due to the efforts of the Yadava rulers, Marathi became the dominant language of the region. Even if they were not of Marathi origin, towards the end of their reign, they certainly identified with the Marathi language. The early Marathi literature emerged during the Yadava rule, because of which some scholars have theorized that it was produced with support from the Yadava rulers. However, there is no evidence that the Yadava royal court directly supported the production of Marathi literature with state funds, although it regarded Marathi as a significant language for connecting with the general public. Himadri, a minister in the Yadava court, attempted to formalize Marathi with Sanskrit expressions to boost its status as a court language. Saint poet Dnyaneshwar wrote Dnyaneshwari c. 1290, a Marathi language commentary on the Bhagavad Gita, during Ramachandra's rule. He also composed devotional songs called Abhangas. Dnyaneshwar gave a higher status to Marathi by translating the sacred Gita from Sanskrit. Mukundaraja wrote the Marathi language philosophical treatises Paramamrita and Vivekasindhu during the Yadava period. The Mahanubhava religious sect, which became prominent in present-day Maharashtra during the late Yadava period, boosted the status of Marathi as a literary language. Mahimabhata wrote Lilakarita, a biography of the sect's founder Chakradhara. The text claims that Himadri who was, a Brahmanist, was jealous of Chakradhara's popularity, and the Yadava king Ramachandra ordered killing of Chakradhara, who escaped with his yajic powers. The claim is of doubtful historicity. Kannada Kannada was one of the court languages during early Sunna times, as is evident from a number of Kannada language inscriptions see origin section. 
Kamalabhava, patronized by Biyama V, wrote Sandhashwarapurana. Achana composed Varadamanapurana in 1198. Amujadeva, patronized by Simhana II, composed many vachanas or devotional songs. Chandarasa of Pandarapur wrote Dashakumara Charite around 1300. Simhana patronized Changadeva and the Kannada poet Kamalabhava. Sanskrit Simhana was a great patron of learning and literature. He established the College of Astronomy to study the work of celebrated astronomer Bhaskaracharya. The Sangeeta Ratnakara, an authoritative Sanskrit work on Indian music, was written by Sarngadeva or Shrungadeva during Simhana's reign. Himadri compiled the encyclopedic Sanskrit work Shadurvarga Chintamani. He is said to have built many temples in a style known after him, Hamadapanti. He wrote many books on Vaidyakshastra medical science and he introduced and supported Bajra cultivation. Other Sanskrit literary works created during the Sunna period include Suktimuktavali by Jalhana Hamaramadana by Jayasimha Suri Karnakutuhala and Siddhanta Shiramani by Bhaskaracharya Anantadeva's commentaries on Varahamahira's Brijajataka and Brahmagupta's Brihatsputa Siddhanta Haripaladeva's Sangeetasudakara, a treatise on Indian classical music, which bifurcates Indian classical music as Hindustani music and Carnatic music for the first time, acknowledging the Muslim influence on Indian music. 